Hi everyone, welcome to um, this uh, four player chess stream. Um, we've just watched uh, Magnus Carlsen in very convincing fashion uh, beating uh, Gary Gusainov. Um, I cannot promise uh, that I will uh, repeat my countrymen's um, impressive uh, wins uh, because this is four player chess. I, I think the only way you can ever understand the um, what's going on um, is, is by actually trying it out. Uh, so I'm going to go for uh, playing uh, a new game and it's basically as bad as it sounds. Um, I'm being told I have some technical difficulties. How about now? Do we have audio? Ah, uh, it's my turn. Uh, so, um, I've been trying out this, um, this four player chess and basically I still have no idea what's going on. Um, I think the gist of it is that you never want to be exchanging your pieces uh, because if you exchange with uh, one of your opponents, there's still going to be uh, two opponents who, um, who benefit. So if two guys uh, make a trade, then the other... Um, the remaining two guys are the ones really benefiting as they will have more pieces. Um, so, yeah. Um, diagonals are important. King safety, I think, is important. Um, to be honest with, with everyone, I, I still have not cracked this game. Uh, but I have, have actually won quite a few games. Um, but I, I still have no idea what I'm doing. So right now I'm, I'm basically playing it as a normal game of chess. Uh, developing your pieces, taking the center. Um, but the center is somewhat larger than normal. Um, so I'm not sure how much it helps. Uh, I've I've watched Danny Wrench. He has done some some videos. Ah, oh, look at this. Blue just blundered uh, his bishop uh, against Black. Um, that's that's not good news. Uh, so maybe I can take this opportunity to distract Black. N to no to distract Red, uh, because he will be busy taking this bishop. And then maybe I can open up some uh, diagonals uh, towards. Oh, darn. Okay. Uh, okay, so yellow has just attacked my pawn here on M10. Let's say B7 uh, to keep my sanity. Uh, and I also have this thing going on here, but if I take here, then red is going to take back and then I'm going to lose this pawn. So I actually have to prioritize this other one and then I just end up losing my pawn over here. Um, okay, so now it has been opened up for the, for the queen. Um... So the blue queen is actually going to go down the entire board and uh, attack me. Uh, and blue is getting helped out by yellow. They're ganging up on me. Um, so yellow is kicking away my knight so that blue on the next turn can, can take it. Um, yeah. Every time I win in this game, it just, it feels so random. It, it feels like what was going on and then things kind of just work out uh and, and right now that this is just 
a perfect illustration of that. Um, because I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so yellow is attacking blue. So we see that blue uh, blundered his bishop quite early on. And therefore, he's in massive trouble. Uh, and also, it means that it's very beneficial to be close to the blue guy uh, so that you can give checkmate. So how, how the game actually works is that you get points for how many pieces um, you take. Uh, so uh, red is in the lead with uh, nine points uh, and you get five points for a bishop, five points for a rook, uh, one point for a pawn and um, nine pawns uh, for a queen. Man, and this yellow guy keeps attacking me. So I, I think that's in terms of formulating a strategy, I think... Uh, making sure to kind of attack the guy closest to you uh, has to be um, the best strategy. Uh, and that's precisely what Yellow is doing. Uh, he's attacking me. Um, I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I suppose let's just go with the knight. I think one of the, the main points is that when you get the pawn over to the other side, you get a new queen. Uh, and over to the other side is a bit of an overstatement. You actually just have to go with the pawn one, two, three, four, five, six steps. Um, so I think at this point, having no idea what I'm supposed to do, um, I'm just going to run with the pawn. I'm just going to run with the pawn. Try to get a new queen and basically hope for the best. I think one of the, it's a bit cynical, but one of the main strategies is just making sure that nobody, nobody really pays attention to you. Um, because if you are allowed to kind of gradually build up something or just if you just stay in the corner and just make sure that none of your pieces are exchanged, then, then you're going to be... Uh, a, a decent favorite playing against uh, all uh, all of your opponents. Well, you're going to have more pieces than your opponents. So while you may not have as many points as them in the point system, uh, you will have more pieces to take all of their pieces. Uh, and that, that could be good stuff. Okay, this was a very good move. It's a very good move from, from yellow. Mm, because now if I take the... Um, if, I, I, if I take this pawn, then I'm going to be checked. Actually, I think I have a good move here. Uh, no, that was a terrible move. <laughs> Why would I think that was good? Okay, I, my idea was that now it's not check if he goes forward. Uh, but on the other hand, he can just take my pawn. Um, but then again, I can take the, this pawn, uh, because now there's this pawn, while it's massively confusing, is moving forward as seen from yellow's position. And now it's being blocked by my bishop. Um, and now he's threatening my bishop with the knight, and I'm going to move my bishop. Oh, I I have a pawn hanging here. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, four player chess is complicated. I I, I don't know how else to put it. Um, 
you lose control and there's always some diagonal you were expecting to that you miss one diagonal where one of the three other guys has a bishop placed way on the other side of the board and and suddenly it comes into play and completely ruins everything um yeah i'm just gonna stick to my kind of waiting strategy let the other guys kill each other and then i'm gonna kind of stay in the game to pick up the pieces uh because right now yellow castled away from me so yellow is essentially just saying that i'm safe my king is safe uh i'm very close uh to blue and blue basically cannot do anything uh because he he blundered this piece early on and he's just he basically has no pieces left to defend himself uh i could try to attack uh red uh, but right now his his king position i think is looking pretty solid um yeah so i'm just gonna it's it's a bit of a chicken strategy but i'm i'm just gonna be the quiet miles in the corner and wait for better times maybe i should try to get my queen into attacking blue because right now red is really and he got an extra queen as well he's really trying to basically gobble up all of um all of uh, blues pieces uh yeah the, the time control is a delay so you get like 10 or 15 seconds in which your time doesn't um which doesn't affect your time but, but once that time has been used then you have to move uh and um you have a minute and I basically spent my entire minute, so I'm gonna need to move faster. Uh, and moving fast when you have no plan, um, it's not great. Okay, it's my turn again. So I threaten uh, Yellow's queen. Uh, he protected it. And then I'm moving back. Um, it's such a sad strategy, but at this point i cannot see how it's also kind of if i start attacking red then he has two queens so he might just decide to kill me for annoying him um and that's not good uh, i'm gonna try to advance my pawns um but i have no control over this diagonal uh which is being controlled by the red um so I'm going to try to gain control over some of these light squares and push the pawns forward. It's not my turn, right? Yeah. So red really has been having a very good game. And I, I don't understand what was the masterful skill of his plan. He got a new queen. He just pushed that pawn behind the the queen as far as he could he, and he got a new queen and blue blundered a bishop but but other than that it's just ah uh, there's a check interesting um but i'm not really participating in this attack on blue so i i think yellow and uh, especially red is is gonna kill Kill that guy. Um, ah, and that's very clever. Red is just ignoring, ignoring the the stuff yellow is doing because he wants yellow uh, to kind of use all his pieces. So, what's funny about four player chess is that sometimes if you work together, one guy can give a check and then the next guy can give another check and then it will be like a double check and 
and all kinds of disasters for the for the for the Anunnaki guy. Um, but you can also see that people are trying to um, create trouble for each other. Um, and if one guy kind of invites uh, a, a cool attack, then another guy, this is actually very cute. It's a, a fork with a pawn on two queens. You don't see that very often. Unfortunately, if he gives up this uh, queen on the right hand side, which was um, a pawn that got queened, then I will only get the value of the pawn. So that's why it says one, because uh, I will only get um, one point for, um, for taking this. Uh, and consequently, I'm actually not going to take that queen. Uh, because then I lose my most far advanced pawn. Um, and I th think I'd rather blue ha red have two queens than losing my chance of getting two queens. I think so. I'm going to do it. And then, you know, somebody will critique me and tell me um, what kind of strategy I'm doing wrong. Uh, I should see if there's any chat going on, uh, which I'm missing out on. Uh, push that third pawn. Yeah, I should get all my pawns into the attack. Um, whatever happened to his queen? I turned around for one moment and then the guy's queen disappeared. And now I queen my pawn protected by the rook. And this is his real queen. If I get this one, I will get nine points. So he will have to move that. And now suddenly I'm participating in the attack on the blue king. Because now I have a, a queen and a rook on the open file. So I, I, I turned around to check the, the chat. And suddenly my position is, I think, overwhelming. I think I have a massive advantage here. Um, yeah, and the guys aren't really doing much. I I'm just going to go queen another pawn. Why not? My king is pretty safe. I have a lot of pieces around my king guarding it. And I'm just going to get those queens. Yeah, I think this was essentially my strategy from the beginning. Let the other guys kill each other uh, and then hope that um, I'm alive to do some damage afterwards. Yeah, so chess torrent, I, I queen when the pawn, it's not really reaches the center. Uh, it's more like uh when it steps across on the other side of the board so this is half half the board and then when you get across half the board then it's a new queen um i need to make a move quickly before i lose some time yeah okay and now red actually prevented me from getting a new queen and Blue is just giving away his pieces. I don't think that's a good sign for me. I'd rather he uh, he kept his pieces. But now I'm starting an attack. There's a pin on the queen. I have a bishop. I'm using my knight on the f6 knight. No, it's not f6. It's i3. It can really mess with your head this game. Uh, and this is good. If I now get my bishop to um, f6, no, um, i3, then it's also participating in the attack against um, uh, against blue's king. So this is this is going to be a massive uh, bishop when I get to take take back here. That bishop is going to participate both ways, both against the the red king and against the blue king but 
But now the thing is, my next move is very obvious. I'm going to take this bishop. And that's often the occasion people use to create some some Zwischenzug, uh, to create some intermediate move uh, and start attacking my pieces or doing something that means doing the obvious move, often a recapture, uh, would not be very, um, very good. But I got away with it this time. My bishop pointing towards blue's king, pointing towards red's king. I also, I'm not that far behind on points. I'm like 10 points behind. Uh, that's not too bad. And now I have the opportunity of giving checkmate. So uh, there's a check from the queen, which means a double check is checkmate. Uh, so now I'm going to put my queen here and give a checkmate. So that's, uh, that's often why you should be careful about checking a very weak guy, because then some other guy can come in and... Um, and give the the final blow and um, thereby also giving all the points so uh the red resigned uh, and now we're both trying to get to the king as quickly as uh, possible and i'm gonna beat yellow to it uh, my queen is safe because of this uh there's a dead pawn in the way uh, and now he's just giving me his queen I don't know if that was a blunder, but I'm getting a lot of points these last few moves. A lot of points. So now it's all about just finishing the game. Um, yeah, when you are up by 20 points, you can claim a win. Um, but the thing is, I'm not sure if you get more rating, uh, the more points you have. And I've actually asked the chess.com guys about this. Uh, and they basically told me, uh, you have to talk to some of the programmers. Because uh, the guy I asked actually didn't know. Um, so I could, I could resign here, thereby giving my opponent 20 points. But when we do the, the countdown, I would still be ahead. Um, so that's why I have the option here on the side to claim a win. I, uh, you actually cannot see it. It's outside the, the frame I made, but I have the option of claiming the win. Um, and some guys get really upset when you don't claim the win, but if I get extra rating, the more, the kind of, the more points I get, the more, the more vicious I was in, in winning the game. Uh, then it makes sense to play on because I mean if we just play on I'm going to win this game for sure Points are irrelevant for the current claim the win yo, okay, so uh, the people uh, Are saying that I should claim the win so I I'm doing it But now I'm being told that I can only claim on my turn and I, I don't want to let him take my knight and then kind of get away with it. So I'm gonna, I claim the win now. Uh, my guy came second, which is actually kind of crucial. You also get rating points for second place, but not as many as first place. As I understand it. Points are irrelevant for the current rating system, I, the chat says. Um, but placement is not irrelevant. So you get more rating for first place than you do for second place. Um, so yeah, that's a win. Um, I'm going to do another game. I'm going to try to have more of a strategy in this game. Um, the strategy of don't bother anyone and just hope for the best is it's not really a strategy that's gonna get you a lot of fans uh, so i'm gonna try to do the strategy i did in my first couple of games and, and that was p 
pushing my rook pawn uh, at the earliest opportunity because that's kind of the the best way i think to put pressure on your neighbors uh so i'm gonna go with this rook pawn and then kind of i'm um, to be honest I, i'm not sure what i'm doing but i'm kind of pretending to take control over some squares near yeah I, I don't know what i'm doing uh who is the right highest rated player in four player asks jordan and the, you can find that out by going into the chess.com uh four player um uh, interface and you can go to the leaderboard or top rated players uh, you can click in and see who is the current top rated and now one of my opponents the blue guy is actually watching the show right now he's commenting in the chat uh, so i'll be careful to reveal any strategy um uh, to him uh, but luckily we are not neighbors so i'm gonna be focused on red and uh yellow those are gonna be my main attacking targets okay now a guy in the chat is saying rating points depend on other players rating if high a high rated guy loses all of the other opponents receive points really i don't see how that can be true if you come third and there was a high rated guy in there you get points uh yellow is being careless with his king I don't see how he is. He's about to castle. And it's not like I was ready to give a check at any point. Okay, I'm starting to push my pawns. Push those pawns. Now, this is interesting. Red castled into my kind of area. Um, I'm going to want to exploit that somehow. So yellow looks to be putting the king away from me while red is putting his king in my neighborhood. Uh, so that's going to be um, that's essentially going to be my strategy, I think. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to keep pushing pawns as long as nothing bad seems to be happen maybe i can get some uh, assistance from my uh, blue friend he's pointing his bishop down towards uh red ah and he made a mistake yeah blue could have taken this pawn on whatever the square that is um it's e13 e13 blue could have taken this pawn and only now white dis uh, yellow discovered it so he blocked with his pawn Yeah, now the typical queen race is starting. So blue is pushing his D pawn. Uh, red is pushing his D pawn. And now yellow is uh, pushing pawns as well. Um, very often, at least one guy gets a new queen quite early on. Because he's just pushing those pawns. But at this point, we're quite far into the game. And if there are two competing guys trying to get a queen um then basically they both cancel each other out and just wasted a lot of time for nothing so always when people are pushing their central pawns uh, i'm hoping that um some other guy will take care of it 
because I don't want to be bothered trying to stop him from getting a new queen. I'm hoping that somebody else will take that responsibility, which is egotistical for sure. But that's basically the essence of the game uh, that <laughs> you hope that the other guys do the exchanges so that you, you're you left in a very good spot um, towards the end of the game. Yeah, actually, I I thought I was being the tricky one, but I should be a bit careful um, because Red actually had the option of giving Blue my Rook, in which case I would be in massive trouble. So let's go back and look at that. Uh, when I exchanged off my pawn here, now there's a possibility of Red going forward with his pawn and then it's Blue's move and then Blue can take my Rook. So I'll have to be very careful of that. Uh, sorry. So I, I basically just protected my own rook by moving it one forward. And it seems like yellow is going to be the winner of the new queen race. That's interesting. That's interesting. So yellow is getting a new queen. And he, he's looking pretty solid. Um, right now I moved my bishop to kind of point at yellow's king at some point. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a guy in the chat who, whose name is uh, Triple Ngafil, which is Norwegian for triple fork and he's commenting I, I want to see uh it's also swedish uh for uh, for a triple fork and he wants to see a queen checking all three kings at the same time uh i've never managed that so far but i have had some um sometimes i've had a queen that checks two different opponents kings at the same time and you get extra points i think for that at the very least you get extra points for um double checks um i'll keep pushing my pawns you get extra points for double checks and um triple checks i think there there's got to be some situations in which one king can be checked by all three opponents at the same time and then you get extra points yeah now i'm in massive trouble uh because blue like i was talking about red uh opened the uh file for the rook and i got really lucky there because white had the option of giving up his bishop uh and making sure that i couldn't uh, recapture both uh, both pieces at the same time but i think essentially white is so happy with his position he didn't want to uh, give up his bishop to mess with uh, my position because in his mind green is not doing anything green is just being a spectator to the game and not really accomplishing anything so i think he decided that he didn't want to give up a bishop to make me lose a rook um which I think could be a good decision because if he had taken, then I would have taken back with a check. So I would be in massive trouble uh, against blue, but also he would be in some trouble. And he didn't want to give that advantage uh, to blue and red uh, in terms of um, doing exchanges. Uh, let's see, which pawn can I advance? This one. uh brandon is saying i don't think red wants to do that because you never want the person to the left to benefit from things as theoretically has an advantage yeah no i i i don't completely follow you brandon Braden, but i i very much agree that it makes a big difference whether a person is to your left or to your right 
Um, so basically, I'm too much of a beginner to understand uh, the point you're making. Uh, you, yeah, and now I'm getting in huge trouble against black here. Um, no, uh, red. Uh, yeah, I'm in massive trouble. Basically, I'm only hoping that yellow doesn't feel like crushing my spirits. Because at this point, yellow could assist red in making my life very miserable. I think I made a mistake by... Okay, this is good. This is very good, actually. Um, yellow is disturbing red. Um, which means maybe red cannot continue attacking in the same way. Because now if red takes my pawn here, then yellow will take back that pawn. And he, black kind of wants to punish yellow, but he cannot give up his queen because then I would take it. Um, yeah, now it's starting... Now it's starting to get complicated. Yeah, only blue and red castled. I agree, but it doesn't really matter whether you castle or not. It's about how safe your king is. So my king didn't castle, but it's not safe. However, if I were to castle right now, I would just get checkmated by white and this queen getting into, because I've been pushing my pawns so much. Uh, so at this point, I, I think I just gotta, I don't know what to do, to be honest. I'm in, I'm in big trouble. I can gamble that red understands that it's not in both of our best interests to do trades. But if he does trade, then I'm going to be massacred no um, I, sh I shouldn't be using that word today i already got corrected for it uh to get pretty much punished by um yellow and that was a big mistake because now yellow is just going to take my knight because i cannot take it back ah but i can move my queen and then red can take his queen but on the other hand, I don't think red is in much mood to help me out. Okay, what just happened? He took a, something? He took something? At this point, I think if I just survive, I have okay chances. Let's, um... But on the other hand, I don't see how there's any chance of me surviving. Yeah, this is tricky. Uh, yeah, Glorex is basically <laughs> giving the suggestion that I have used so many times previously. Uh, he says, play passively and they will forget all about you. Uh, so that's essentially what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stick to my corner and hope that they don't decide to checkmate me. Uh, because there are so many uh, other uh, pieces and pawns hanging. Uh, maybe they will get busy um, uh, taking pawns instead of checkmating my king. And I think if they decided to do so, I, they could so easily checkmate me. I, I'm, my king is just horrendously placed. Um, on the score, it's actually very close. Blue is leading with 12 points. I'm in the last place with six. But I'm pretty used to being in the last place. So I don't, I don't mind too much. Blue is one move away from getting a new queen. But since I know he's listening, I, I would strongly advise you not to do that. Um, because I'm just going to take it. Okay, so white is doubling his queens against my knight, and there's nothing I can do about it. 
depressing that's what it is and i'm losing on time as well since the person okay brandon is coming back uh since the person to your left has the biggest chance to start a combo a combination attacking you meaning that they get a check or take an important piece uh, this also means he has advantage over you so in theory i should have an advantage over yellow uh but my king position is so 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 bad um that's simply not the case uh but also red does have an advantage over me uh, and that's not good with the combination of um uh, red um having a massive attack actually on this at this point red could have taken on f8 check and then yellow would have checkmated me by taking my knight on c6 or whatever the squares are i get confused um and that would be good for yellow because he gives checkmate which is 20 points but on the other hand it would also be good for uh red in terms of there being one less player for the second place spot a uh, yellow has three queens so basically whatever happens oh i lost on time oh. yeah this is my problem with the delay is that i i don't actually i don't manage to figure out when it's my turn Because when my clock is not moving, I'm just, I figure, oh, it's probably somebody else's turn. It messes with your head. Okay, I'll try another game. I didn't deserve to get anything out of that. I was getting completely, I, my pawns weren't even close to queening and all the diagonals were open towards my king. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, I'm, I'm getting some ha-ha-has in the chat. Um, which, to be fair, I really deserve. Um, especially when I tell you that is not the first time I lose on time. I mean, I have lost so many games on time. It's, yeah, it's depressing, really. Okay, I'm going to try a new strategy uh, now. I'm going to do the, since I'm red and the one who moves first, I'm going to do the um push the pawn as far as you can go strategy um but unfortunately yellow had the same idea uh which means we're gonna mess up for each other so that's not good Okay, this is interesting. I think both white in both yellow and myself are going to get new queens. If he now understands that he should go one step forward, because I have no interest in taking his pawn. I'm just going to go and do a new queen. Okay, he did not really understand that. I'm going to uh, block this diagonal to make sure that my left opponent doesn't have a check um, I think that's solid reasoning I need yellow to go one step forward so that we can both queen <sighs> but he's not really feeling very cooperative uh, at the moment okay I'm gonna block this diagonal as well um, Yellow, one step forward. I have no interest in taking your pawn. I'm going to queen, and then you're going to queen, and then we're both going to retreat our queens, making sure that we both have the advantage of two queens. Yeah, but he's not really following, following that scheme. And now blue is coming and blue is basically trying to take my pawn. He's just going to go one, two forward and then he can take my pawn. Uh, so now it's starting to be a bit of a hurry. I need yellow 
to step forward. Yeah, my new writing. The other game completed and my writing got a massive kicking uh, for losing that. Oh, it's my turn. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really... Sometimes this pushing the pawn to make a new queen is very brilliant, but if some guy comes and stops you, I mean, what, what are you going to do? Then you just have no development and no real plans. But on the other hand, my normal strategy is usually just doing nothing. Uh, so pushing the d-pawn, trying to get a new queen, or in this case, the G pawn. Um, it feels like a valid strategy, seeing as how if my main plan doesn't work, I'm just going to be moving back and forth for a very long time anyhow. I really need yellow to push the pawn forward. I mean, he does understand I'm never going to take that pawn. I mean, I think if he only understood that we would both queens, he would, we would both queen, I, I think he would do it. But I have absolutely no interest in taking your pawn. Please move it forward. Okay, and now blue is coming to the party as well. Um... So that means I I, I got to push it forward. No? no, but if I push it forward, yellow is going to take it. And then I lose a tempo, I lose a pawn, he loses a pawn. Okay, I'm just going to castle and wait for better times. Maybe the chat can help me out. Push first and hope yellow doesn't recapture. That's the kind of strategy that has worked horrendously for me <laughs> the past couple of days. Whenever you hope that some guy is going to do something or not do something, it never works out. Never works out. I mean, people are not very good at cooperating here. And they are very good at being mean and ruining it for others. Uh, and in essence, I mean, that's the right strategy. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and now my, my pawn is getting trapped because both blue and green are coming to, to trap it. Yeah. But my king is a lot safer than it normally is. So even if I lose a pawn, I mean, I think things are going okay. Yeah, so 8756 in the chat makes basically the only point of this game. The um, And that is, uh, it's never good to be exchanging pieces. Because if you are two guys exchanging pieces, it's two guys not the the other two guys are not exchanging pieces uh and that's just yeah you would be giving your opponents such a massive advantage by doing that so in theory you shouldn't be exchanging um and then it never really works out the way it's supposed to be Yeah, so Brayden is saying that I should make a solid setup uh, and basically use my opening to defend my king. Uh, okay, so blue is inviting a queen trade. And I hate it when they do that. Because they know that they're not supposed to exchange queens. And they do it anyway. And it's just... And then I have to be the one, the responsible one, moving away, making sure that we don't exchange pieces. Yeah.
Yeah, the Green King, Chestorin, is saying that the Green the Green King is not looking too great, and I've uh, I've seen that as well. Um, the Green Queen, uh, the Green King is the one I'm kind of pointing my pieces towards. Um, it's just my bishop and my queen, but it's in the general direction of um, of green. Wow! Now, what he t what's? Why would he take that pawn? I mean, I think I think he's basically gambling that somebody is gonna create trouble for me, while while this move is going on because otherwise I, i'm getting a very nice pawn structure and an open file for my rook so kind of green has to be creating some trouble for me i guess the only way he could do that is pushing the pawn forward but he's not going to do that Aselis is kind of stating the obvious in terms of there are many different dynamics in four player and that is certainly true uh, my problem is that i haven't really kind of discovered what those dynamics are uh, so i'm kind of still struggling with having some kind of basic opening strategy in, I basically crawl up in a corner or kind of wait for the other ones to exhaust themselves, which I think is not really a very positive way of playing, uh, but effective, um, I think. Um, uh, but I think there's one thing I do want to say that in a four-player game like this, if there were teams, if like red and yellow were on the same team versus blue and green, that would be also a fantastic game. And then you would get to see so much more of the cooperation and, and those possibilities um, uh, in the game. Suddenly I realized that yellow is doing very, very well. Yellow has like three pawns close to queening. Where do they queen? They queen here. Yeah, yellow is doing pretty well. And he's placing his queen behind the pawn and the rook behind the pawn. Yeah, and he blundered a pawn. Okay, but he, he's winning a knight, I, I suppose. I guess that's something. <clears throat> Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yellow is good because green is passive, says Mr. Google. But green passive? I don't know. I think green is in massive trouble now because yellow is going to take his knight and then he's going to have to take back and then I'm going to take this pawn very close to his king. So basically, while yellow is doing a great job of um, of taking green's pieces, maybe I will be the one who gets to give checkmate. Oh, wow. And speaking of that, those long diagonals are so scary. How, how long has that been an option? Ah, so that's... Um, sorry. That's tricky play from, from blue. He, he advanced his pawn to open up the diagonal. And then he won that, he won that rook on, um, out here. Uh, and how am I going to checkmate green? I'm going to move my pieces closer. So I guess the knight in here somehow. Wow, now things are happening. So this is very good news for me. Um, blue and yellow are basically trying to kill each other. And uh, blue just blundered uh, a knight here, which I'm going to take on the next move. 
um, he's blue is so focused on yellow that he's kind of ignoring what's going on elsewhere. Wow, and now green is getting a new queen. Can I stop it? Do I want to stop it? I have no idea. Well, green is not really doing too great. So if he gets a new queen, that shouldn't be a disaster. I'll take this one. Oh, my rook is hanging. Yeah. I have no control over what's going on. And also, I have a rook on this kind of file. So if yellow were to move his knight, then... Ah, oh, no, the pawn doesn't go that way. It goes this way. Yeah, this is confusing stuff. Okay, I'm just going to go back. I should really do something about this rook. Maybe I'll move it. Okay, what's the uh, chat saying? Rook, rook, rook. Ah, oh, people have been telling me that my rook is hanging. And I just haven't been paying attention. Well, um, yeah, I eventually I saw it. Eventually I saw it. If two people are killing each other, go for the third, says Mr. Google. And that, I think, is excellent advice. So I should go for green. And as I say that, I realize that I have blundered my pawn down here. Um, and in that case, green has two queens ready to give to checkmate me. Uh, and I got away with it. That's insane. So if green had taken this pawn, then I would be just completely dead. Um, so I'm not paying attention and I'm getting really lucky. Multiple times. Yeah, I'm, I got a headache. I got to be honest. Uh, this game is giving me a headache. Okay, it's my turn again. Um, let's just move the pieces back, yeah? yeah? It's more fun to go forward. Threatening a queen fork. Going after... Yeah, but that's... This is the reason I shouldn't have moved that knight, right? Because now he's threat... Blue is threatening my queen, and then green is going to threaten my bishop, and then I'm going to lose a piece because I cannot protect both at the same time. <laughs> I'm getting a question in the chat. Is this hammer time or hammered, hammered time? Oh, I, I thought you were essentially making a joke about Hammer time hammered. I, I think that's what you were saying. But yeah, I'm getting crushed. I think. But it's, it's so hard to tell. Everybody has about the same amount of points. Um, and if I just stop moving pieces away from my king, then I think I have the... No, actually, maybe blue has the more safe king. So, yeah, blue is actually the one doing best here. And now green is offering exchanges. That's basically the cardinal rule. You don't do exchanges. <sighs> but I, I don't see any other good move. Bishops are almost as good as queens. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, but I'd rather not lose any of those. Uh, Quad Radical is saying, this is so funny. Blue's pawns cannot be taken by green or red because of each other. 
Well, red is me. What are you saying that I can't do? I can do anything. And right now I feel like moving pieces toward Green's King. Actually, on the next move, I'm moving my bishop down here. And then I'm gonna try to do some checking with my queen. What? Yellow just blundered made in one. It's just, but that also means that I get the queen for free. Maybe that's good for me. I don't know. Ah, but it also means that blue is just marching towards more queens with his central pawns. Yeah, I think blue is taking this one home. For sure. Uh... Play with the queen, you can mate green. Um, that was directed at me. Um, and it does feel like I should be listening to that advice. But on the other hand, if I now take this bishop, then blue gets additional points for double check because he's getting a queen when he takes my knight. Yes, yeah, so I, I just don't really see. I don't see how I can do anything about blue. I think blue is just winning so easily. Okay, but my knight is attacked, so I should move it, right? And then blue will make two new queens. I'm kind of working under the assumption that I will beat green no matter what. But maybe I should be thinking about making sure that I finish second. Blue is probably going to win no matter what. So I should make sure that I finish second. So maybe I should try to kind of help blue into checkmating green. Because then at least I will make second place, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm a bit low on time. Why are you taking... Oh, sh yeah, I thought it was protected by Green's Queen, but of course I gave a check to Green. <sighs> okay, but if I just let Blue take the Green Queen... No, blue is definitely going to win. He's very well coordinated and he has good pawns and stuff and many more pieces than me. But right now I'm focused on making sure I finish ahead of, um, of green. So now I, I managed to block uh, the prospective queen. Um... That's good. That's actually very good, I think. Um, uh, what, what advice am I getting? Blue maybe made a mistake. If blue is the one to checkmate green, then I'm not sure I'm going to get enough points to get ahead of green. Do not play your rook to protect that rook. Let us work together against blue. Please do not mess up. Yes, thank you. Uh, you never know what people are going to do. Suddenly they will decide to team up against you. I think actually that would have been a smart move from, from Green if he had gone with his Rook. 
because he's he green kind of has to realize that he's not doing very well um and therefore he should kind of help blue kill me i think okay so i'm gonna go for the checkmate i'm gonna let no i'm gonna take this back I don't think that blue can get. A new queen anytime soon. Yeah, now blue is actually doing me some favors. I don't think that was a good move because anytime green cannot move, then I'm being helped in the direction of checkmating green. So I, I think that bishop check may have been a mistake. Because it, it wastes one move on the bishop check and then also makes sure that black, no, that green cannot do anything while I checkmate him. Uh, maybe I'm not going to checkmate him as easily as I would have hoped. It's not entirely clear blue is doing very well at the moment. Yeah, blue is thinking. I think he's regretting some of his choices. Okay, if I take the rook, then he takes here. No, he goes forward. I want to make sure I'm not helping out green too much either. I gotta make a move fast because my time is running out. And this is a bit of a bug. I, I Sometimes I don't actually get to know that um, my time is running. So there I was very close to losing on time. Which is also why I've been losing so many games on, on time. Um, things kind of have a tendency of going south suddenly and then you start thinking and then everything goes wrong um yeah i don't know what my strategy should be now okay this is interesting green is helping me out with um messing up uh blue that's very interesting um, i don't have enough time to kind of ponder the consequences um i assume i'm almost ahead of blue so now i'm going to beat blue and i'm in a position to beat green i think so i think i'm, I'm just gonna sit quietly and kind of hope that they kill each other Check. Okay. At the very least, let me not lose some time, I think. Uh, that is the problem with people. You cannot rely on them. Such an untrustworthy guy. I should have seen that coming. Yeah. And now I'm third. I really thought I had this under control. Why is he just letting green get another queen? 
Is that part of his strategy of making my life miserable? I think he's basically just asking. Go checkmate blue. You have checkmate in two moves. Thank you. That's very kind. Just go checkmate blue. Checkmate in one move. In one move. Thank you. Okay. And now the question is, is he going to claim a win? Because if he claims a win, then I get second place. But if he doesn't claim a win, I'm going to lose because I, I have no chance of getting kind of, of taking any of his pieces. Uh, which is why I kind of think this whole claiming a win thing is a bit ridiculous, but it, because it really does affect who gets second place and who gets third place. Uh, so I'm eight points behind. So I basically need to get not checkmated while somehow taking eight points. And that's never going to happen, unfortunately. It's never going to happen. Yeah. So I'm going to get second, third place and then I'm going to lose more rating and then I'm going to be more depressed and I'm going to keep going on about this game being very, very tricky. Just let me take a rook. I'm just a rook away from getting second place. I don't think he will care too much about my feelings. I don't think so, no. I guess my best chance is hoping that he will exchange rooks, but I don't think he's going to do that, no. That's a third place finish. Um, four player chess uh, has been launched by chess.com. It's occasionally fun. Very often just a complete heartbreak. Um, blunders, diagonals you missed, um, things that go wrong uh, are very prominent. Uh, in four player chess, uh, there is some kind of strategy to it. Uh, I have had a lot of great input in the chat today. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not yet at the level uh, where I actually understand anything what's going on. Um, if you want quick results, uh, good results early on in four player chess, uh, my advice to you uh, is to. <laughs> Stay quiet, stay in your corner, make sure your king is uh, safe and hope that the other guys uh, spend too much time uh, killing each other uh, to notice that suddenly you're a queen or a rook or massive material up. Um, make sure that you always have kind of one attacking piece because often people make mistakes that they give a check on a very weak guy and then you can come in for the finishing checkmate, even though you really didn't have any credit to uh, the guy getting checkmated in the first place. Um, let me see the chat uh, if there are some some any good um, uh, any good uh, tips for beginning players. Uh, This is nuts, says uh, Fothares. Um, even a grandmaster doesn't win. Um, trust me, this game is much, much harder uh, than chess. Uh, I look forward to trying again with you uh, sometime. Uh, yeah, and until then, have fun. Uh, teach me more four player chess. Um, and, um, yeah, see you guys later.